So we're going to work on the hidden connectors today. Uh, first thing you're going to do is you want to have your piece of vinyl that's uh, two inch by whatever you have, but you do need a total of four five inch pieces in the end. So this will be like a sample piece and your half inch double sided tape, leather tape. I can find the start of it, which is always challenging. Okay. And you've drawn a line down the center of your connector. So just put the double sided tape on that line. Give it a smooth. We're going to take a piece of Cordura, just like we did for the straps. So we're going to put this right down the center. Like so. Another piece of double sided tape right down the center of the Cordura. This actually looks like more like 3 8 inch, but it doesn't matter. Okay, remove that tape. And we're just gonna fold this to the center to make our connector. Flip it this way the center. You can use your pasta roller, your seam roller, when you get all done. Flip it over and give it a nice roll. So you can tell the edges are kind of wonky, but they're going to be cut off anyhow. That's why I make them longer, so I have a little fudge factor. So we're going to take these to a sewing machine and uh, going to sew them up, and then we'll come back and insert our connectors into our bag. So come on back. So we're ready to uh, do a little bit more sewing, finally. There is so much prep work before we ever can get to the good stuff, huh? It's like uh, you gotta eat your dinner before you can have dessert. So anyway, um, so we're going to uh, first start with top stitching the uh, connectors, the hidden connectors. And uh, because it's a vinyl, I need to have a Teflon foot or it will stick. So I have this really cool quick release uh, tool on the machine. You can get these from anywhere. I think they're like $6. And this is my favorite zipper foot. It's got the uh, hinge and it's slightly raised there. Best foot ever. And this foot is the 1 8 of inch edge stitch Teflon foot. You can get these on Amazon as well from, I think it's Qtex, Qtex Sewing Supplies. Mm -hmm. So we're going to pop this on, we're going to put our thread through the hole. I'm using mm -hmm. Selric, it's the thread that I like. I know people either love it or hate it. I love it. I have no problems with it. So this is the uh, soft polyester thread, which means it's not bonded. Uh, it works great on. This machine, the 8700 Juki, even some domestics too. So we're going to increase our stitch length to about five, which is the highest that we'll go on the Juki 8700. And we'll just use the edge of the foot. That's a guy. That's why it's called the edge foot. And go. Might as well do chain stitching as we did in, in quilting. I always have Debbie Hunker's voice in my head about proper posture at the machine. You don't want to have your elbows in your ears. So thanks for that, Debbie. Anyhow, keep your posture good, stay straight. Don't have your shoulders in your ears. So we're going to just take this off. Go the other direction. So a lot of people are, you know, sometimes say, oh, Kelly, your top stitching is so perfect. Well, it's perfect because I use perfect tools. So get these edge feet. They come in. I think five different widths and uh, they just really 
make it possible for you to have a straight stitch. It's kind of hard to mess it up. I don't want to give away all my secrets. Ha, ah, I'm just kidding. You know, everything I know, I will share with you. I almost always will make my connectors and straps longer than I need because sometimes the ends get kitty wampus so I can cut that off and have a nice fresh place to start. So that is the extent of sewing the connector straps. We're just going to, not straps, connectors. We're going to trim these off the ends and then we'll cut them to five inch lengths. And then later on, we will use them to insert into our, the front of our bag and the back to make our hidden connectors. So that's that easy part. So we have our two connector straps sewn together and we're just going to cut them to five inch links for a total of four of them. So I know I have more than enough, but better safe than sorry. So we'll cut off here. Measure out five inches. Another five inches. This one. And sorry for those of you who I drive crazy by cutting towards myself. I guess old habits die hard. Here, see? I learned. Cutting away from me. And one more. One, two, three, four, five. All right. So that was easy, huh? So now we have our four lovely connector straps. So now we have our four connectors and we will work on adding the hidden connectors to the front and back of the bag next. So let's go. All right, so we're ready to uh, work on our hidden connectors. What I like to do is uh, measure twice, cut once, especially since this is a uh, kind of a permanent thing. I've already drawn my lines on one piece, but I'll show you on the next one. But basically, you want to draw a line, which is one and three quarters inch down. Draw the full line. Then you want to mark two and a half inches in from each edge. And then from there, measure one inch towards the end on each side. And that's going to give you your cut marks for your hidden connectors. I'll do one with you here. So, put this here. We're going to put our line this up so that the uh, the two tops edges are even with the cutting mat. Come down one and three quarters of an inch. Like so. Draw our line. Is that one and three quarter? Yep. Draw our line. And then we're going to measure in two and a half inches. I'm going to go this way. Here we go. Two and a half inches. Put a tick mark there. And then two and a half inches on this side. Put a tick mark there, and then we're going to measure one inch that way. Put a tick mark and one inch towards me. Tick mark. And this is now is where you put your connector. Hopefully they matched up. I'm going to double check my work because I do make mistakes all the time. Actually, that's pretty good. All right, so 
those are your markings like I said um, I do them one and three quarter inch down and two and a half inch here and then one inch from there I'm not sure where we're gonna slice a hole so let me get our uh, connectors ready and our hardware and uh, we'll go from there okay now we're going to cut the slits for our connectors you can uh, always cut them you want to cut them a little bit smaller than one inch if you have to make them bigger you can use your scissors or that but so we're going to start at this far end or the towards the middle and with our little rotary cutter and just start a little bit of pressure and go down and then you can kind of check with your your slot it looks pretty good to me i got lucky i guess now we're going to cut this one and we're starting from here, using a little bit of pressure, go to there. Take a look, see if it looks big enough. It does. If you'd like to, at this point, you can uh, put a little edge coat if you're worried about the vinyl showing, um, or the back, or the foam actually. Um, I don't think we're going to have that issue, but uh, we can, because the vinyl should pop inside once we pull the connector. So we're going to have, here's our connectors. You're going to put your connector in the slot so it's wrong side facing you and just go about halfway or so. Okay. And then repeat for this side. And it should be nice and snug. That's where we don't want to cut an exact one inch slot because we want this to be nice and snug. Pull that down. And they should be about equal heights. And they should be equal heights. Okay, so that's that. You want to, you can have a little bit more on the top. The reason why we cut them so long is so that when we actually do stitch them down, you'll have plenty of room to play with, even though you really don't need that much in the back, because we'll trim that later on. So even them up, that's how it looks. We're going to go to the sewing machine, and we are going to stitch, not right, right above the slit, not on the slit, not below the slit, right on top securing the connector to the front of the bag we'll do that for both sides then we're going to come back add the hardware insert it and then we will secure the connector in place but we'll do that all on the uh, the sewing machine so come on over so we're ready to attach our uh, connectors to the main part of the bag and we simply will be stitching Right, a, right on top of the vinyl, not uh, not on the slit, but right above the slit. And we'll do that for all four sides, but I'll show you two of them here. And I have my Teflon left zipper foot, so I can sew on vinyl and see where I'm going. I just use the edge of the zipper foot right along the cut line as a guideline. And we're gonna give it, go back and forth. I don't think I need my hump jumper, but you never know, so I'm gonna sink it. Make sure you're not closing up that cut, the slit, otherwise you won't be able to get the other part in. Okay, so we're just going to sew. Once it goes, get it, let it go. And then go back once. Get one more. That's it. We'll come up here and do this one. So I'm right above the slit using our foot as a guide. Sink it. Use our hump jumper just to get us going. Make sure you're not sewing the slit. So that's that's it. They just attached like so. That's how the back looks. And now we're going to go back to our desk. Actually, I can probably do it here. I think I'll just pause the video and do it here, so we're not going back and forth. So my hardware, I'm back. So now we're going to tape the connector 
and put it around the hardware towards the back. And then we're going to thread it through the little slit that you cut. And just shouldn't be too hard to get in there, but here's a little, little bit of force. And it's going to come through the back here. Nice and snug, what we want it to be. Okay. Pull it back to the front. So you're just going to pull that all the way down until it's tight. And I like it to be as far down as it will go. And you'll notice when you do that, that the vinyl in the front will kind of fold down with it. So that's really pretty. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. So we're just going to make sure it's nice and tight. Then we'll put this one on. Make sure your hardware doesn't have a front or a back. Some of them do. This one doesn't. So you're fine either way. Pop it on. Slide it through the hole. Excuse me for blocking your view. I'll grab it from the back. We're just pulling that one little piece tight. So the same amount of tightness as this guy. Not pretty. So now we are going to, and the vinyl has been, is tucked under, and we're going to sew on top of the vinyl to actually close up the hole. And for that, I think we'll need our hump jumper. And I'm going to sew this direction so that I can have the foot right even with the connector. And I'm going to pull this a little bit tighter just to make sure everything is in there. I don't like a big gap of... Um, okay, so we're going to put our foot right where the connector begins. Mm -hmm. And we're going to sink our needle. We're going to use our pump jumper to help us make, keep it nice smooth. We're going to just sew from end to end. And I like to go back and forth just twice. So go. take care that you are sewing over the exact same line. I'll show you that one. You can see that. That looks so pretty. Nice straight line. And we'll do it for this side. Again, I'm going in this direction. Not only so you can see, but so I can see. So we'll put this, oops, now we're going to do this one. If your vinyl has popped out, give it a little tug, move it out, and then move it back in so it's nice and tucked in. I don't think it matters if it pops out, to be honest, though. So, go to your start point, sink it, put your pump jumper to get you going, and so And you're sewing as close to that line but it's possible. Mm -hmm. And trim off these little stray hairs. And we have our first side done. So it's very pretty. It's sturdy. The back looks like so. Even the back doesn't look half bad, does it? I'm all about giving the haircuts while I can think about it. So, so we will um, be putting in a rivet. You could put two. I'll just put one 
they'll go through both of these pieces of vinyl. So you pretty much already have the, the, the backing that you need for a secure rivet. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other two offline, and then we will uh, put our name batch, and then we'll start putting this girl together. So good job, everybody. So here we are making awesome progress. I have added my badge to the front of the bag towards the bottom. There's still going to be a band here, so it'll kind of be, it'll still be prominent. You could put it up here if you'd like, or you could put it on the back of the bag, uh, whatever you like. So I did, uh, if you care for the measurements, my badge is two and a half inches up from the bottom. I always put a piece of Peltex before I um, insert the actual badge and then add the little safety bar, whatever that thing is called. And then after the prongs are pushed down, I add a piece of fleece. And I glue the fleece, I don't uh, fuse it. We don't need to add any additional heat if we don't have to. I also have, as you noticed, I have trimmed the excess connector straps. So here we are today, and we're going to be adding our rivets. And these are, these rivets are from buckleguy.com, and they're my favorite. And the reason why they're my favorite is once they uh, are put in place with the, with the cap, they don't come loose. It's really hard to get them to come loose. I've had um, plenty of experiences, not plenty, but a few, where the rivets have come undone. For me, twice for a customer, it's not fun. So I now have complete confidence when I install these rivets that um, my straps are gonna stay secure. I don't even sew the straps anymore, as I mentioned earlier. So this is a big plug for a buckleguy.com for these beautiful rivets. These are 12.7 millimeter post size and a 9.2 millimeter cap size. So that's that, that's my plug for Buckle Guy. They better send me a check, huh? Kidding. Everything I do is always without reward except for your love and appreciation. I think you already know that. So we're going to punch some more holes in our perfectly good bag. I'm going to use my marking pen and I like to put my, I'm gonna put one rivet in, centered about three eighths of an inch down from the top of the connector. And you know, I say about a lot, and I don't really want to because you should be precise. So if you're gonna do it three eighths, do it three eighths all the way around. So if I ever say about, just know I actually mean exactly. Okay, so I'm gonna mark three eighths. I already marked it, that's why I can tell that it's correct with my favorite antique seam gauge. So three eighths. This one came loose, actually. Did you? This one I'm going to mark again because it wiped away. Oops. Okay. Three eighths. Okay. And we're going to take our another punch tool and we're going to punch more holes in our bag. So just going to take it. And you're gonna to have to scooch it up there a little bit to get in there. And you are going through the vinyl, the foam interfacing, and two layers of connectors. So once you get to the hole and it's the perfect placement, use both hands and punch it. And you have a nice hole. If you want, you can go ahead and put one of the rivets in. While it's fresh in your mind, go ahead and Carefully post, put the little cap on. You'll feel it snap in place nicely. And then we'll do this side. And push this there. And use two hands. Often I uh, cannot reach the hole for some projects, so I use the, uh, the two millimeter hole punch on the press. That does a fine job when you can't access it with this little wheelie punch thing. So we'll pop the, ouch, she says nicely, pop the rivet through the hole what we just punched. Hopefully it punched. It says it did. Actually it didn't go through the back. Sometimes it does that if you're not extra strong. So we'll just do it again. 
There we go. Now I heard the pop. And put the rivet through. Like so. Look I'm pretty. Then we have our press. I was told by Julie in our group, pretty side down. So you want to make sure that the cap is, I'm going to stand up for this. The cap is inside the nine millimeter. This is a uh, nine millimeter die, nice and secure. So we're going to put the cap face down. You can feel it. You want to sure it's centered and you're going to just press until you feel don't press too hard, just so you feel a little pop. Perfect. Then you're going to do this side. Pop it in the hole. Don't be in any hurry at all because these are no fun to get out. Trust me, I know. So make sure you have it there, that it's even, that you're not on any kind of like weird angle. And then gently push. Nice pop. And now you can see we have our rivets put in nicely. So I'm sure you have done that before, but um, you know, rivets are just a, I like them, but sometimes they're, you know, a little utilitarian looking, but they can, uh, they can make a lot of bags pop. And I think it works on this one. So that's it on this. I'm going to put the rivets on the other side and we're going to start building the, uh, the side pockets. So.